Assalamu alaikum everyone this is Dr. Hasna back with another video of Hasna's Napme and today we're discussing the part 2 of bladder if you haven't watched the part 1 yet it's all about the gross anatomical easiest features of the bladder with me nothing's gonna be hard so guys you've tuned into the right video watch part 1 first and then you'll understand part 2 guys we're gonna be discussing the nerve supply this is a uh, screen of my cra crash course board and if you want my entire GIT renal module or any other crash course of a module in which I cover the entire topic in just one or two hours and has complete revision of the topic then you need to DM me a sap in the description is where you find my Instagram all right guys let's talk about the nerve supply but before that we'll talk about the blood supply let me just get this straight why didn't I make a whole blood supply situation but I made such a big nerve supply situation because the blood supply is so easy guys I just want you to remember this basic concept that when the aorta ends, it forms two common iliac branches. The common iliacs further divide into an external and an internal iliac. What is the purpose of that? External is going to go and supply the lower limb. Then what does the internal do? Internal will always go towards the pelvic cavity and supply that pelvis area. That's how the lower body is supplied. So an overall view of the lower body supply is that the external is for lower limb and internal is for uh, the pelvic cavity area and the genital area, all right? So the internal iliac artery is what's gonna give the superior and inferior vesicle artery. Now vesicle artery, anything related to the bladder is gonna be known as a vesicle. Therefore, it's a very easy blood supply. Superior inferior vesicle artery coming from the internal iliac. Similar to the vein, vein is always a copycat all you have to do is um, the venous plexus goes and drains into internal iliac vein so the more difficult part now we're going to talk about the nerve supply of the bladder now bladder is a viscera now visceral uh, organs or visceral peritoneum pleura anything visceral you should always remember that it's going to be autonomic nerve supply what does autonomic mean it means sympathetic and parasympathetic what does that mean sympathetic is we all know it's that uh, situation where you fight and flight and what about parasympathetic? It is like the relaxation system. So guys, in the bladder, the more dominant one is the parasympathetic system. Let me tell you how. So what happens is, I just want you to remember this image of bladder. There's a bladder. First, there's SV, the sphincter vesicae, the internal urethral sphincter. And then there's outside, externally, is a sphincter urethra, which is an external urethral sphincter. Sphincter urethra is something that is under voluntary control, and we're going to talk about it in perineum. So right now, we have to focus on what do we need to supply in the bladder. We have the wall of bladder, which contains the detrusor muscle. The detrusor muscle, when it will contract, and when the sphincter vesicae will relax is when we will be able to pass the urine. So we're going to have to supply nerves to these two areas only. So focus on that. So what is the sympathetic supply of the bladder? All you have to remember is that lumbar chain, uh, the sympathetic chain of the ganglia. That, let's talk about that first. That comes from the lumbar one and two ganglia. This goes ahead and goes into these plexus is called the superior inferior hypogastric plexus. Hypogastric plexus means it is present in the hypogastric region of the abdomen. What can it mean? Superiorly is a superior one. Inferiorly is inferior one. Like It can't be easier than that. So these plexuses of nerves consist of various different fibers. Some are like parasympathetic fibers. Some are sympathetic fibers. Some are visceral air different fiber different types of fibers and they're just like bundled up in this uh, concentrated place all right so that is where your sympathetic fibers from the lumbar one to ganglia are coming uh, within the hypogastric plexuses it's gonna like throw its nerves over there and it's gonna be like go ahead and just provide whoever sympathetic supplies from lumbar one to ganglia and it goes in the hypogastric plexuses what is the parasympathetic supply the parasympathetic supply is from the s1 s2 s3 preganglionic hear it right now guys preganglionic parasympathetic nerves what are these nerves called because this name is too huge s1 s2 s3 preganglionic parasympathetic nerves therefore what we did is we made it easy and we give, gave them one specific name these are known as pelvic splanchnic nerves therefore these are pelvic Splanchnic nerves. What are pelvic splanchnic nerves? Pelvic splanchnic nerves are always going to be preganglionic. What does preganglionic mean? They haven't synapsed. They haven't turned on. They haven't entered the, the switch so they cannot do anything. They need a ganglion to first synapse and then provide. So pelvic splanchnic nerves are preganglionic. And remember this one thing is that the, the, splank, the parasympathetic supply goes into the inferior hypogastric plexus. And that is how it gets its supply to the uh, bladder. So this is sympathetic and parasympathetic. What about the fact that how will we be aware of the fact that our bladder is full? So for that, there are visceral afferent sensory fibers. All right. So they're going to be like stretch receptors all around the bladder. 
the visceral afferents are also going to travel within these plexuses within the same nerves within the pelvic splanchnic nerves and the sympathetic nerves is going to unhi ke andar na ja ja ke spinal cord tak pahunch jayega and our spinal cord will find out okay this bladder needs to be emptied and then it will stimulate its parasympathetic and cause the emptying of the bladder so now is where we talk about the function what does the parasympathetic do parasympathetic does it causes emptying of the bladder so and sympathetic is going to do completely opposite so remember parasympathetic system in git is always going to be like parasympathetic meaning peristalsis system that's something that i want you to remember in a shortcut peristalsis means it gets it means that it gets the work done so wherever there's parasympathetic there's going to be like propulsion of whatever is going to be there all right p for parasympathetic p for propulsion you heard it from me guys so what it does is parasympathetic is going to cause the contraction of the trochlear muscle whereas it's going to cause the relaxation of the sphincter vasicus so what does parasympathetic cause don't forget this function number 1 contraction of the trochlear relaxation of sphincter vasicus make sense now that we know the actions of the um, parasympathetic system and various nerve supply of the bladder we're going to talk about a very important clinical of the bladder this is known as when there is going to be damage to the spinal cord how is the bladder going to react to that like the bladder has a heart so obviously it's going to have different reactions to different situations so three types of bladder i want you to remember in anatomy we're going to talk about atonic automatic autonomous before you guys uh, say anything to me uh, the source of uh, what i'm about to teach you is the snell clinical anatomy book uh in atonic bladder your entire spinal cord is being damaged your entire spinal cord anywhere except the sacral segment all right sacral segment means where the pelvic splanchnic nerves are going to arise from so from the entire spinal cord uh anywhere the damage cervical thoracic or in the coccyx anywhere that is not uh, sacral is going to have damage all right uh in the automatic bladder your spinal cord is going to be recovering from the damage that has occurred in the spinal cord apart from sacral segment so for automatic and atonic you have to remember sacral is doing good all right so atonic automatic i'm fine sacral sacral segments are always going to be fine in atonic automatic whereas in the autonomous you have to remember is that the sacral is going to cry you can see the damage is right at the sacral part of the spinal cord let's talk about the atonic bladder first in the atonic bladder you're living your life and all of a sudden you undergo a car crash hopefully not guys not so suppose you're going and all of a sudden there has been damage either above or below your sacral spinal cord now what happens is spinal cord gets a little bit shocked whenever there's damage uh whenever you go through a big tragedy don't you get a little shocked for a while like you don't know how to react so similarly your spinal cord is also human so please spare it a little obviously spinal cord is going to go through the same reaction so that is what it's going to do in atonic bladder the spinal cord is undergone shock although sacral seg segment has not undergone damage but since the entire spinal cord is shocked like what the hell just happened so the even the sacral part is also a little like huh what happened what happened so it's not going to be working so what do you think is going to happen what happen is your bladder is going to full like fill up to its complete capacity when it is finally fully full because your parasympathetic system is not there to relax the sphincter or to cause contraction of the detrusor what's going to happen when it's completely full with urine and it's just containing all that urine what it's going to do it's going to overflow and that is the only way your urine is able to leak out and when it overflows otherwise your bladder there is no uh, supply of parasympathetic to the bladder because your parasympathetic is gone a tonic there is no tone there is nothing therefore only when the bladder is full of urine it's going to overflow the urine all right what about the automatic bladder automatic bladder is in a state when after a couple of so this this graph i've made over here is representing that nothing happen nothing happens and then all of a sudden the urine comes out a little bit all right whereas an automatic bladder is when the spinal cord is finally recovering i made it less than red i made it a little pink this zap thing because now the spinal cord is recovering and sacral segments are finally return they're like bringing their memories coming back and they're like wait 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 aha uh -huh, wait i think i'm supposed to do something but it's still confused on what to do is just randomly out of the blue in 1 to 4 hours it will let out urine and every 1 to 4 hour your bladder will uh the detrusor will contract and the sphincter vasicus will relax every 1 to 4 hours like it's automatic bladder like the name says it that after every 1 to 4 hours like you have no control over it you're gonna pee every 1 to 4 hour right so that is automatic bladder this usually also occurs in infants and finally we have the autonomous bladder in this what happens is the sacral segment is damaged 
on point and this is where i want you to remember like a drunk guy or a person who has a balloon a balloon is what your bladder is going to represent the wall is going to be completely flaccid bladder is going to fill up even more than its limit like it's going to fill up like extreme because it's super flaccid there is no spasm in the response no nothing no, the any nerve supply to bladder is gone or when it's too over filled what it does it just dribbles 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 not a proper uh, emptying but like a continuous dribbling occurs when there's overfilling so guys if we try to contrast compare and contrast these three types of bladder uh, let's do it atonic and automatic are best friends they're going to occur together atonic automatic what happens not in the sacral segment but in autonomous there is the sacral segment damage uh, atonic what happens is only when it's completely full it overflows Automatic what happens every one to four hours it contracts and proper lets urine out but every four hours or one to four hours in autonomous what happens it completely uh, fills up its wall is flaccid and it undergoes dribbling when it's overflown or atonic it happens when there is spinal cord shock uh, automatic occurs when there is recovery from that shock and autonomous happens when there is complete direct damage to the sacral segment of the spinal cord. So guys, this was all you need to know about the uh, nerve supply of the bladder. Hope I made it easy for you. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. And if you ever have a difficult concept, you know where to go. So see you all.